There are four concealed individuals right before your eyes. We're learning about camouflage, tactical artwork. Next on Kid Bits. Where did Tim go? Where is Tim? World wonders. Where he is. <clears throat> okay, I'm Tim Nesmith, Ship Superintendent and Educational Outreach Coordinator for the USS Kid. And this was Elijah and I's take on trying to demonstrate camouflage for you. Uh, did you know artwork actually has a tactical use in the military? And you can see I'm wearing some of it right here, camouflage. Well, we're going to get some folks, some professionals, to actually help us demonstrate it a little bit better for you. Stay tuned. It's going to be a little bit hard to see. Military camouflage is the art of disguising people, equipment, and installations by painting or covering them to make them blend in with their surrounding environment. This helps them to avoid observation by enemy forces. The idea for this came when mankind first observed it occurring in nature as animals blended into their habitats. It began to be used by the military in the 17 and 1800s as technological developments increased the range and accuracy of weapons fire and optics increased the distances from which the opposing forces could observe each other. During World War I, French painters Lucien Victor Guillaume de Sévola, Jean Baptiste Eugène Corbin, and Louis Guinot were camouflers who worked to help French forces blend into their environment. Their work hid large guns from distant observers and from a new invention called the aeroplane. Guinot developed the first French camouflaged uniform. De Sévola created the camouflaged tree, an observation post that would be installed in no man's land between trench lines under the cover of darkness, replacing an already existing shrapnel damaged tree. British and German forces also began using these fake trees to spy on each other, employing artists from their respective countries to develop them. Warner Brothers Studios spoofed this tactic in an animated training film for the U.S. Army during World War II. Bitte, mein Herr, haben Sie ein Like? Danke. Artists of all types. Painters, sculptors, architects, filmmakers, movie set designers, landscapers, even scientists such as zoologist or ornithologist, volunteered or were recruited by the respective countries during both world wars. Early camouflage uniforms of the 18th and 19th centuries simply mimicked the color of the terrain in which a unit was operating. After the artist got involved in World War I, Actual designs began to emerge to help blend in better. The camouflers use whole palettes of colors and patterns to break up the human silhouette and make it harder to recognize against the background of a variety of environments, from jungle to desert and to arctic landscapes. Camouflage can be used in multiple ways, not just on uniforms to hide personnel from the enemy. It has been used to hide tents and buildings, on netting used to cover guns, and even on vehicles, aircraft, and ships. Aircraft camouflage has been used to disguise planes from enemy pilots in the air by blending into the terrain below, and from anti-aircraft guns and missile batteries on the ground by blending the aircraft into the skies above. Ship camouflage often operated the same way once aircraft became a threat. USS Kidd's own Measure 22 camouflage helps her blend in with the light blue sky behind her when viewed from the surface, while her ocean gray decks help her disappear against the deep blue seas surrounding her when seen from above. Military bases have even painted runways and tarmacs with camouflage patterns matching those on aircraft to help hide them from enemy high-altitude reconnaissance flights and spy satellites. 
damaged ships like USS New Orleans after the Battle of Tassafaranga in 1942 used netting and tree limbs to hide from Japanese aircraft, blending into the shoreline and surrounding jungle at Tulagi Harbor while temporary repairs took place. In the days following the attack on Pearl Harbor, fears of a possible Japanese assault on the west coast of the United States ran very high. Several of the largest aircraft manufacturing centers in the country were located here. Art departments and set designers from the major Hollywood studios worked to hide the massive Boeing factory in Seattle, Washington, and the Lockheed factory in Burbank, California. Stretching miles of chicken wire and netting, they built false neighborhoods of houses, streets, parks, and cars atop the gigantic factories so that they were indistinguishable from the surrounding cityscape when viewed from the air. All right, so we're here with members of the Louisiana Army National Guard and with kid staff member Oren Bordelon. Uh, they're going to be demonstrating some of the different types of camouflage that are available, past uh, uniforms and some present uniforms. We're going to see if they can blend in with the environment around the USS Kid and see if you can spot them. So get some eagle eyes ready, and we're going to be back in just a second. Sometimes it's impossible to blend in with your environment. In those instances, camouflage is useful to mislead the enemy. During the American Civil War, Quaker guns were used in this manner. They consisted of simple tree trunks or logs painted black and leaned against earthworks or mounted on carriages or caissons. They gave the false impression of greater numbers of artillery pieces than were actually present. Visible above a position's parapets, they caused an enemy to delay their attack or maneuver more carefully, thus buying the defenders more time to prepare or evacuate. This tactic was used by the Confederates here in Louisiana at the Siege of Port Hudson and at the Battle of Fort Byland. In World War I, Q-ships gave the appearance of harmless merchant vessels in an attempt to lure German U-boats into making surface attacks, but they were actually heavily armed with concealed weaponry hidden behind movable or pivoting panels. During the North Africa campaign of World War II, the British Middle East Command Camouflage Directorate used their artistic skills to disguise tanks sitting in plain view, making them appear as trucks from a distance. They created entire squadrons of fake tanks and aircraft to make the Germans focus their forces and their attention on one geographic area while the actual assembly centers for an attack were coming from a different direction. The Americans used inflatable tanks and aircraft to misdirect enemy forces. Fake runways and aircraft were used to deceive reconnaissance aircraft and spy satellites during the Cold War. An example of disruptive camouflage used to mislead the enemy in naval warfare is popularly known as dazzle camouflage. True dazzle camouflage first appeared in World War I again as the result of an artist, British painter Norman Wilkinson. Far from hiding a ship against the horizon, dazzle camouflage stands out to the viewer, but at a distance it is meant to mislead the enemy as to the type of ship, the direction it is traveling, and the range to target. Later forms of disruptive camouflage included the American Measure 32D worn by Kidd in 1944. Some patterns portray false bows and sterns or bow wakes so that submarines time the firing of their torpedoes incorrectly. Let's see if our professionals are ready. There are four camouflaged individuals in plain sight aboard ship and on the ground surrounding the ship. With just a casual glance, can you spot them? Note, ignore the walking man on the left. He is not part of this experiment.
Well, did you see them? How well did their camouflage work? How many of them did you pick out? Can you see me now? No. Good. Don't tell the boss. Okay. So, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Kid Bits. Learned a little bit about tactical artwork and how it can, through camouflage, help us hide from the enemy, like our good friend Joey right here. The USS Kid is a nonprofit educational organization that receives no regular state or federal funding. To book your next field trip, your next overnight adventure, or to access our teacher resources, click on those links down below. And remember, subscribe, like, and share our videos. We'll see you next time.